Welcome to another edition of ISTH Congress Daily News. I'm Vin Kaltavidal, and I have the pleasure to be joined by Dr. Jan Ostermark to discuss some recent phase two data with Concizumab. Thank you for joining us today, Jan. So, what exactly is anti-TFPI? Well, anti-TFPI is a high affinity monoclonal IDG4 antibody that binds to something called the second QNIS domain of TFPI and thereby extending the initiation phase of the coagulation cascade while maintaining the rest of the coagulation uh, cascade intact. Can you tell us about the design of this phase two study with concizumab? First of all, the aim of this phase two program was to evaluate the safety and efficacy of daily subcutaneous treatment with the concizumab compound, as well as to establish the optimal dose for the coming phase three program. So the program consists of two studies, one in non-inhibitor patients, and it was hemophilia A patients in the severe form, 36 patients, and one inhibitor trial with altogether 26 patients enrolled. Uh, the design was also that in the non-inhibitor trial, it was a single arm study with no control arm, whereas in the inhibitor trial, there was a randomization done two to one for patients either going for concizumab prophylaxis daily or being treated on demand with 7A. Uh, they all started on the same level and they dose escalated if the patient experienced three spontaneous bleed or more. Uh, regarding the outcome, we could see uh, by using this uh, concentration of concizumab that we could restore thrombin in more or less all patients at the different time points we measure them during the main phase. We could also see that we could reduce the amount of bleed significantly, uh, comparing the on-demand treated patients in the control arm and those that were treated uh, prophylactically with concizumab. Uh, there were no safety concerns in this trial. Uh, we had no thrombolic event. Uh, we have no adverse events leading to withdrawal. We did find six patients with antibodies towards the compound on single measurements that were a neutralizing effect, but in no case there were any observed effect on the activity of uh, the compound or on the clinical outcome of patients. Uh, so, uh, and all interesting also was that the main phase of these trials was followed by an extension phase and uh, all patients went into the extension phase, somehow indicating that the approach used here with subcutaneous daily treatment with an, an, a device like we had was attractive to these patients. So this was more or less the outcome of, of the study as such. What did you find from your phase two study? Well, the aim of the phase two study was, uh, first of all, to to evaluate safety with this compound, but also to look at efficacy and to establish the optimal dose for the coming phase three trials. And what we could see in this program, which was based on two studies, one in inhibitor patients and one in non-inhibitor patients, is that the compound did not uh, have any safety concerns, uh, what we could found at all. We could see no thromboembolic event, we could see nothing leading to withdrawal of patients uh, or any other concerns. And we could also see that the efficacy was what we would more or less expect. There were a significant reduction in uh, comp when we compared the bleeds in patients treated on demand with inhibitors and those that compared with those that were treated with this compound prophylactically. So from that aspect, it, was, it fulfilled the expectations and the hope that it was safe and it was efficacious. And we could also find that the some patients seem to be not treated optimal with the lowest dose we use. So for the phase three program, we were going to use the highest dose used in this phase two program, 0.25 milligram per kilogram. Uh, we will also use, as was done in one of, these, one of the trials, in the inhibitor trial, to load, to, have it to use a loading dose in the patients as well to reach steady, steady state as soon as possible. Why is thrombin generation the right endpoint in this patient population? Well, thrombin is, uh, is somehow a key player in the coagulation cascade. So 
I think that based on everything we know in hemophilia is that to measure thrombin, we will also get a marker for how the coagulation works in patients. So if we restore thrombin potential as we did in this study with our patients, both with and without inhibitors, that should mean that they do have a capacity in the coagulation system to prevent uh, bleeds. So I understand that concizumab has received the designation from the FDA as being breakthrough therapy, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. And they've done that based on the data and uh, on the hemophilia B population with inhibitors, which clearly uh, I think shows that not least this cohort of patients do benefit from having more and better options that potentially we have today with the drugs we have today. Well, Jan, I look forward to hearing more about the product as it continues to evolve. Okay, thank you. That wraps up another edition of ISTH Congress Daily News. Thank you for watching.